Hello again and welcome to today's cosplay quick build video. I'm going to be making some Wolverine claws for my X-Force Wolverine cosplay. I've been working a lot so I kind of had to cram this in a whole bunch of double shifts but let's just go ahead and get right into the video. Okay so first thing you're going to want to do if you're doing both hands is to cut out two of the top hand pieces and you're going to need six total of these for one hand so you'll need to cut out 12 total of the blades now I've already taken the liberty of gluing one together and I reinforced the center and once again I used a household item so that anyone and everyone can pretty much find this or something like it you could also use dowel rods but what I had was a coat hanger and as you can see I cut sections out of it and what I did was I took, since my coat hanger was old, it was a little bit warped, which has actually worked out in my benefit because it had a slight curve to it already. So I had to figure how it laid even just on a flat surface. I used my cutting mat for that. And then I marked what is essentially the top when it's sitting even. From there, I traced around it, then took the other side, lined them up without moving this, and pressed into it as hard as I could to leave an impression from the piece of the hanger and then I just traced around that. That way when I glue it together everything will be lined up. Now if you're wondering how I got the hanger in there so that when I glued it it doesn't have a giant bulge in it, I use my Dremel rotary tool to grind a channel in this. Now, <laughs> once I have the channels in both sides I take and I glue in my hanger piece and I use some super glue to glue it in and if you're noticing if you're noticing all this kind of white stuff around here what this is is once I get this pressed and glued into place I take super glue and just kind of run it alongside here like it's a moat and then I take baking soda and put baking soda down over top of the, of the super glue until the super glue absorbs it all and I let it sit for about a half hour come back shake off the excess and what that does is it forms a much stronger bond it's really hard to get plastic to glue but this will make sure it's not going to go anywhere also the super glue and baking soda when it uh, ends up hardening is almost as hard as glass it's really really hard so that'll also help make it stiff now I probably explained this in the intro, I don't remember, but part of the reason I'm doing this is because of the rules at my local conventions. And they vary convention to convention, but there's pretty much zero chance of getting any aluminum or metal weapons, unsharpened or not, for props. You can't do that. So I can't make the claws of anything except for a rubber-like source. I can't even do wood. They may and probably would allow resin at some cons but if the tips were pointy and they felt them and said hey that's too sharp then it's got to go back also I've had some issues I haven't done any resin pouring myself but I have bought some resin cast props in the past and the issue I've had is on sharp points I bump it the slightest and that chips off it's not much better with foam where if you bump the points they'll end up wrinkling and eventually probably tearing or something but it's, 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 it's a lot cheaper to use, you know, an old hanger, some super glue that I got at the dollar store for a buck, and some baking soda. So, that's that. Okay, so I have glued the first two together, and those are finished. But, I've left this one undone. And the reason for that is, this is kind of a pain. It's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, essentially what I do is hold both sides of the foam and then drag the Dremel in a straight line where I need it to go. And that's pretty simple to say, but since this is rotating, it constantly <laughs> wants to shoot off to the side. And you should always wear safety gloves. You will notice that I am not wearing safety gloves whenever I do this and part of that is because I'm worried that 
I'm more likely to slip wearing the gloves than not, but always wear proper hand protection. And on my Dremel here, I have it set between 15 and 20 on the RPMs. Okay, and there is the channel. Now you'll notice it's not perfect and not perfectly smooth. I am going to go over this probably at least once more after feeling along it just to see any spots. Like right there, it's a little thicker, but just to go through and even it out. Now, for this, I am using a higher quality, more dense foam. I'm not using the cheap Hobby Lobby stuff that I normally use because I wanted something that's going to be a little stiffer and a little easier to sand. Uh, with the Hobby Lobby stuff being less dense and a bit more soft, I was kind of worried that I was going to make this quite problematic for multiple reasons. So I ended up going with some Yaya Han uh, 5mm EVA foam sheets. Okay, now that I have them uh, all glued together, uh, you can already see I've done it here, which is I've evened this out level. And next, I'm going to go ahead and use the Dremel again to put some shape into this. Okay, so this is the final shape that I put into these. And I sanded it to a sharp angle until about halfway back, and then it's rounded out. And the reason that I did that was mostly just based on Hugh Jackman's claws from the first and second X-Men films. And I believe, on, I don't think they changed them that much. And the bottom is just an angled edge, and so is the front. Now that all three of these are done and as close as possible to one another, I'm going to use my heat gun to seal in all the stuff that I sanded and the foam in general. Okay, so I have sealed these and painted them black. Uh, if you choose to use Plasti Dip and you get black Plasti Dip, you don't necessarily need to paint them black. But I just used some Mod Podge and I just did one coat. Not enough that it's going to be very grainy from the brush strokes, although I still kept them going the direction of the actual claws in any event. But if you do want some sort of a grain, kind of like a metal grain, you can apply a couple coats and just drag the brush through it. After that, I just painted it black with my airbrush. And you don't have to airbrush. You can always just dry brush it or just straight paint it. I usually end up just using something like craft paint, silver metallic. Or if I want to spend a little more money and have a longer, you know, the ability to wait longer for the dry time, then I can go ahead and use something like Model Masters, which is an enamel, and can take quite a while to dry. But for this, I'm just going to overspray the black with an even consistent layer of silver and apply that until I like the results. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got my silver done. And now I have these gloves here that I'm actually going to glue the claws to for my X-Force Wolverine. Now, as you'll notice, the knuckles here are, of course, rounded in between, and the claws don't really fit in between them. So I took a file and ground them down, as you can see, flat there. This also gives a nice rough surface for my super glue to adhere to. Okay, so here I have the claws glued on, and they're actually really sturdy. They don't wobble a whole lot, except on the glove itself. But that is why I have the back of the hand pieces that is going to be glued over where that O that is embroidered into it, which should help stabilize that area there. Okay, so I have the back of the hand glued on. I did blurb a little bit of the glue, unfortunately. Uh, I did not use super glue. For that, I actually used contact cement. I didn't want this to be too uncomfortable. And like I say, the super glue is a chemical bond that tends to make it a little stiff. Uh, and I wanted that to still be flexible, but to still have enough hold to hold it in place. And then I went through on either side of the claws here. And if you saw my video on painting plastics, uh, it was Cosplay Basics Episode 3. You'll notice in that video that I use a combination of super glue and baking soda. What I basically do is put a little bead of super glue along it and then I just take a little tiny pinch of baking soda and just drop it down in there. Let it sit for about 10 minutes just to make sure it's dry and then into a trash can just blow off the excess and then yeah you got that. And just for some quick comparison, I'm certain you saw just how floppy the claws were and how much they were moving. They still do move a little bit, obviously, because they're foam. But this back of the hand piece really did the trick. Those are really in place, and they're not going to move like they were on the other one. They're, they're pretty solid now. I'm pretty happy with this. I really like it. And, of course, I can move my fingers. And the claws go up and down a little bit, but it's not as drastic as what I feared it might be. However, I feel that is all due to the fact that there is a hard, rigid, plastic knuckle section. Okay, so you'll notice that where the super glue is is pretty shiny and the rest of it is matte. And mm, it's not the worst thing in the world that could happen to you, but I'm still going to paint it. And to paint it, what I am using, of course, they had to cover the label with their Hobby Lobby thing, but this is just Tester's model paint. It is enamel. And enamel does take much longer to dry than acrylic. However, I feel like it does definitely bond better with plastics. So that's what I'm going to use to paint this all one consistent black color. So the glue isn't sticking out so bad. And like I said, I'm pretty sure this stuff dries a matte black. So I'll let this dry and we can come back and take a look at it. Okay, the paint has dried and helped to cover up the white from the super glue. Next, uh, I took some plastic wrap and some tape. And I covered my arm in plastic wrap and then I taped it up. After that, I took a sharpie and drew some lines where I want the front and the back to stop. And a line where I'm going to cut it down the center of my forearm to get it off of my arm. And that is going to make the pattern for my bracer or gauntlet. Okay, now that I got it off my arm... This line here, of course, is down the center of my forearm, and this is the center that would be on the back of my arm here. Now, you need this to lay out flat. If it won't, you're going to have to cut it into pieces until it does. So first, I cut it straight down the middle, because this wanted to bunch up, and then this would not lay flat over here, so all I had to do was put a V-cut into that, that I can contact cement later. If you've watched any of my mask videos, you're familiar with V-cuts. And on this one, it would not lay down flat due to the shape of my arm on the underside. So I had to cut it in half. So what I'm going to have to do, of course, is cut the pieces out of foam and glue my V-cut. Glue these two together and then join these two together. Now, for your opposite arm, you just flip the pattern pieces upside down. If you feel like your arms are that much different in size, then you can wrap each one. But I just flipped the patterns upside down. And <laughs> this is going to form the undershell for the actual gauntlet itself, which is pretty basic. And as you'll notice, as specific as this is, I don't feel right doing gauntlet patterns. It's just 
man, it's just too specific person to person. And your arm could be longer and skinnier or shorter, more muscular or whatever. And a lot of patterns ain't going to fit you right. So that's why I'm doing this. Okay, I took some more of the Yaya Han 5mm foam and cut out my pattern pieces here. Three, one, and two. Okay, I've applied my contact cement to my surfaces, allowed this to sit for about 20 minutes, and now I'm going to go ahead and press everything together. Okay, before I go any further with this, I took my heat gun and I heated it on the inside and curved it and then heated it on the outside here so now it will wrap nicely around and conform to the shape of my forearm. Okay, so now I'm going to start to uh, glue some strips of EVA foam onto this. And how I came up with the shape of this strip was I simply just took a piece of scrap foam and curved it around here and then you can kind of yeah you can still see the sharpie lines where I just traced out the outside edge from there I followed that line uh, on the bottom here at one inch wide and then just extended this tab so that whenever I do glue it on uh, it'll have a bit of a more interesting look than just a straight line and the other thing you'll notice here is I've only put so much contact cement on it I'm actually going to use super glue from here all the way to the ends. And the reason for that is contact cement forms a good uh, flexible bond. And this part here I need to be flexible for putting it off and on my arm. However, the sides I would like to be a bit more rigid. And the super glue uh, forms a chemical reaction whenever the oxygen hits it that basically causes a chemical burn and fuses the things together. And with the foam it makes it quite tough and quite stiff with that bond. So I'm going to glue that around the edge to keep it at the curved shape to fit properly on my forearm. Okay, next I took my 5mm and cut out an inch wide strip that is going to be same as before on the top, contact cement in the center with super glue on the sides. And then I did a three-quarter inch wide strip that is going to go on the front. Now you'll notice this is a ways back. That is because the actual uh, end of my glove here is going to cover up to the line that I drew on here with my marker. Okay, so to get everything fastened here, uh, once I glued on my straps, I took some polypro strapping and some industrial strength Velcro. And the Velcro does have adhesive on the back of it, but I did still use contact cement to attach the Velcro. And of course, I also used it to attach the polypropylene strapping. All right, I used some Mod Podge and a brush to seal up the foam. And now I'm going to take some Createx Opaque Black and airbrush it. Like I say, if you just use Plasti Dip, you can just have it all in one color. Okay, so I also went ahead and painted the back of the hand as well, so there would be something to match up, at least color-wise, and link it to the actual bracer. Uh, now it's really all that's left to do is let this dry and try it on. Okay, here it is all painted up. Uh, I did consider painting the bands gray, but have not done that yet. And we'll have to go back and do that later if I decide to. Don't think I will though, I do like it all black. I think that's really cool. 
but there will be gray, of course, in the mask and on the upper body. But yeah, that's about it for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me make this, and hopefully this gave you some ideas. Okay, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Uh, links to the patterns are below for the claws and the back of the hand. Like I say, you kind of need to custom wrap the actual arm if you want to have something like what I did, where it's form-fitting. It's a little different when it's something that's armor, something that's plated, or something like a Predator wrist blade that is a more complicated piece of armor. But for something that's just basically a form-fitting thing you're gonna have to wrap yourself with saran wrap so that's why there's no patterns for the bracer part but as I showed in the video it's pretty easy to do that uh, so yeah hopefully you all enjoyed this video and as always thanks for watching have a great day